Hey, what's going on, everybody? God bless you guys in the name of Jesus. I wanted to do a video so that in hopes this may help somebody in ways that may encourage you. Amen. Hey, good morning and God bless you. Good morning and God bless you. Good morning and God bless Good morning and God bless you. I want to talk about ways that I hear God's voice in hopes that it encourages you that you too may hear God's voice because a lot of Christians sometimes will struggle in this area. Amen. Hey, good morning, Dottie. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Carol. God bless you. Rodney, blessings. Hallelujah. And before I begin, let me give my attention and my adoration to the one who was worthy of it all. Yeshua HaMashiach. Our Lord, our Savior, the lover of our soul. Lord, I thank you for this day in which you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in everything that pertains to life and godliness that you have placed within our hands and placed within our lives and you're doing in our midst to bring about your blessing and your favor, to bring about your goodness in and upon and through our lives and upon our lives. We ask, Father, that you will continue to speak to your people, minister to your people, and ignite your people with the faith that they need to bring them through and to take them to everything that you're calling for them to do in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for this word. May this word ignite faith. May this word unlock. May this word encourage and may this word bless your people that they will have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying concerning your voice that they too may hear and understand the simplicity of your love. So we thank you, we praise you, and we love you and adore you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, brother, hey, good morning and God bless you. You know, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about is the simplicity of hearing his voice. One thing I can say where Christians fail in hearing God's voice is when you try. Hear me. Most Christians fail at hearing God's voice when they strive and try see god and his voice is not in striving and it's not in trying it's in our abiding see and a lot of times it, it it literally has to do with the attentiveness of our heart and our adoration to his to his voice receiving and walking with him just like he wanted to do with Adam in the beginning of the garden. Now, you guys have heard me talk about the garden. You are the garden. Hear me, brothers and sisters. You are the garden. And he wants to walk with you every single day. He wants to walk in your garden. It's always been about the garden, brothers and sisters. Where did God place man? In the garden. Where does the kingdom of, where is the kingdom of God? Within. Where are the rivers of living water flowing from? Within. Who is the voice of the waters? Him. See, in the Lord, he speaks to you. Sometimes people don't even realize that he's speaking 
in your common duties and tasks. Hear me. I tell women this all the time. And until they are told it, they don't recognize that God had been speaking to them all along. Do you know that there's, do you know that the majority, hear me, I'm not saying this is a formula and this is not a, this is not a uh, etched in stone, but I'm telling you, I promise you, a lot of women, especially those that love being in the kitchen, they will hear the voice of the Lord doing common duties and tasks. See, and what happens is when we're doing common duties and tasks, they think it's their thought. When there's a peace with no, when there's a peace that comes, that whispers to your heart, that brings about no cloudiness or no muddiness, but simply a word that inspires and or speaks to you that comes from the father above, which is his revelation, which is the rhema to confirm the logos. See, the rhema will confirm the logos. A now word will confirm the written word of what he's speaking to your heart. I'm going to say that again. The rhema will confirm the logos. The rhema, a revelation or the revelatory inspiration or the, you know, as the old prophets used to have the bubbling up, they used to have the bubbling up of God's word and then they would open their mouth and begin to prophesy. See, and a lot of times, Christians and believers in the body think they have to be doing all things spiritual in order for the voice of the Lord to speak. It's not so. The Lord will speak to you in and through many things. You could be washing the dishes. You could be cooking and chopping up onions on the counter and hear a word come to you so sweet as can be. Oh, that's why I always tell you, you have to become, you have to become a lover. He speaks to his lovers, y'all. You have to get close. See, lovers hear the whisper of the voice. Hear me, lovers hear the whisper of the voice. And in order to hear the voice, his mouth must be closed. And as I said, what did God in the beginning, where did he place Adam and the woman? You got to remember when God placed Adam and the woman, she was an Eve. She was, she was, and they were referred to as Adam. <laughs> see, because God sees oneness. We see separate, we see segregate or separate or die vision. God doesn't see die vision. He sees oneness. See, that's where Christians in the Western culture, we as Americans have to unlearn some things based upon our human psyche of what we think and how it is we think knowledge by the spirit shall and and or will flow knowledge and understanding through the wisdom of the spirit only comes by the inspiration of the spirit that is within see revelation and the ruach of god which is the breath of god that was breathed into adam is now on the inside of you the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead and people hear it spoken to them all the time, but they un they do not understand the reality of what it is they have living on the inside of them. They do not understand that, that you don't have to carry around a gold ark anymore because you are the ark. You are the carrier of the presence. And as a carrier of the presence, the voice within speaks. Ah, see, Christians don't sometimes understand the reality of what has happened 
and what has transpired and what is transforming you. Which is why our minds must be re renewed to the reality of what has taken place by the Spirit. You got to remember you're no longer born of this world. You are, you are in a different realm and in a different reality than the common folk. See, that's why when we are born again of God, and he comes to dwell on the inside of you and you go and you are seated with him in heavenly places. Your carnal mind can't wrap around that reality. Our human intellect cannot bring about a formula to break down what truly transpired and took place by the spirit. Never. Never. See, the human psyche of man will always fall short of understanding spiritual realities and principles by the spirit of what the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of you to do. See, hear me, brothers and sisters, you could be, you could be walking along in the park. You could be washing your car. You could be working, typing on your computer, and all of a sudden, a word comes to you. And you think it's your thought. And now, I'm not talking about the negative thoughts. I'm not talking about the carnal mind thoughts. I'm talking about the voice of the Lord that speaks to you. But here's the thing. Whenever we suppress the voice of the Lord and we don't steward it properly, it begins to fade. Because he tries to he tries to engage you, he tries to bring you into, and he wants to, he wants for you to be obedient to his voice speaking to your heart. So people will ask me, how do I hear God's voice? He speaks to you way more than you know. See, but you're looking for God's voice to speak to you in some type of grandioso where a light's going to appear out of heaven and his voice come to you and, and say to you in King James, thou, oh, my daughter, thou art my son. You know, oh, how I am so pleased with thee. No, 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 no. He don't come like that. The way that he does come is you'll be you'll be there cutting onions or chopping up some stuff on the island, getting ready to cook your meal, enjoying a beautiful day, and all of a sudden his whisper comes. All of a sudden his voice comes and he speaks to your heart. I love you, son. I love you. I'm proud of you. See, his word is life. You will never hear God speak anything other than other than if you're in a situation that could be devastating where the conviction of the Holy Spirit is necessary and needed. There can be the fear of the Lord where you will fear the intenseness, the intense pressure of that conviction come nigh unto you that will grip you to the core and make you do about face and run from the devil and run into the arms of the Lord. So that reality is true too. Don't, don't think that God can't convict you and grip you like you wouldn't believe. Oh, he can and he will at times, especially if you're going in the wrong direction and the devil wants to kill you and destroy and take you out. See, the devil's not here to play patty cake, y'all. He's here for keeps and he wants to steal, kill and destroy not just you, but he wants to destroy those that you love. He wants to destroy everything that belongs to you to try to make a mockery out of our Lord. Oh, but he don't win. You just keep moving and you keep allowing the Lord to be the leading of your life. Ah, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. So a lot of times Christians and I always tell people get out of here. Stop thinking you're going to hear and trying to hear the voice here. Get out of your mind and just enjoy life. Enjoy life. Love on him. Give attention to him. Worship him. Praise him. Thank him. 
glorify him. Christianity is not about doing. Christianity is about being. It's about abiding and flowing from rest. It's about flowing and abiding from peace. This peace I give, not as the world gives, but this peace I give. And from this place of rest, just go about natural task. You can't study enough to hear the voice. You can't pray enough to hear the voice. You can't do enough to hear the voice. You can't sing enough to hear the voice. It is simply in your rest. But the busier you get, the more you drown out the voice. Hear me, hear me, saints of God. You can't force the voice. The voice will always come in the stillness. The voice will always come in common duties, in common tasks, and all of a sudden, you hear him speak. And you know it's him because there's nothing corrupt, there's nothing dirty, there's nothing evil, there's nothing doubting, there's nothing at all. It is pure. His voice is pure. Always going to be pure. It's not going to be twisted. It's not going to be... Um, it's not going to be um, uh, any type of uh, wicked type of word or make you feel condemned. None of that. His voice is like water of refreshment. See, you could be standing there in your mirror, doing your hair, doing your eyes. And just because, see, he will always in moments when you're not trying Always in moments when you're not trying, his voice will come. But it's your job when that moment happens to give attention to him and to worship him in that moment and say, Lord, here I am. What would you like to say? See, sometimes the voice will come in just to love on you. Sometimes his voice will come in just to, just to speak life over you, to dismantle every lie that's, to dismantle every lie, to, to dismantle every word curse, and to destroy any false identity that you've taken on that is not from him. Let his voice be the washing of your life. It's not in the trying. It's not in striving. It's not in how much you fast. Hear me, y'all. You will become frustrated if you think you have to fast to hear the voice of God. You will burn yourself out because you're, you're trying to do in the flesh what can only be obtained in the spirit by rest. Trust me. I've been around Christianity long enough. I've seen ministers get burned out thinking they can fast their way to hear the voice of the Lord. And then once they tap out and they get to the end of, end of their cells and they get wore out and, 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 they, and they're about ready to tap out is when the voice comes. You want to know why? Because it's not about you. It's not about you striving. It's not about you fasting. It's not about how long, how much. No, it all has to do with your heart. Are we going after Jesus because we love him? Or are we going after Jesus because we want something from him for ourselves? Imagine if you're just going to a loved one. Imagine if you're married and you're going to your husband and you only want to go to your husband because you want something from him. Or imagine you're only going to your wife because you want something from her. See, women talk about this all the time. Well, all he wants is this. All he wants. But how often do we do that with the Lord? Where the only time we're praying and crying and calling out to him is when we want something and need something from him. Rather than just wanting to go to him to be with him because we love him. See, we don't fool the Lord, y'all. We don't fool the Lord. He knows why we come. He knows why it is we're coming after him. 
And a lot of times Christians will come after and want to only pray when they need something for the Lord to do. But do we go after Jesus with all of our heart, leaning not on our own understanding and in all of our ways acknowledging him? Do we go after Jesus just to love on him? Just to say, Lord, I don't want anything from you. I'm not even asking of anything in my prayer. I just want to be with you today. I just want to love on you. I just want to praise you. I just want to glorify your name. I just want to sit here at your feet. Jesus, I worship you. But we don't do that. That's where Christians miss the voice is because we get so consumed. We, get, we allow the cares and the worries of this world to drown out the seed of his word that is trying to take root in our lives to begin the thing that begins to grow in our lives, that begins to speak to our lives because of we allowed him space and place within so that that way the tree of life can grow within our lives, not the tree of doubt, fear, and unbelief, which is good, which is the good and evil. The human reasoning. See, that's why a lot of Christians, I'll ask them sometimes, what tree are you eating at? See, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will make you think that you got to strive your way to earn from a God who's already done it for you. See, the tree of life is rest. The tree of life is sit under the shade. The tree of life is pick the fruit thereof and eat from this place. The tree of life is the very person of Jesus Christ himself. See, the tree of life is where you're going to get the true nourishment of where he will begin to speak. See, and if you ever seen the old school type of movies, where people would sit under that tree for shade and they would rest there. They would climb on the tree. They would pick from the tree. And that tree was always having the sun shining upon it. Jesus is the tree of life. He is the life giving source for everything that you'll ever need. So the voice of the Lord is going to come to you in your common duties in your common task. Don't let anyone try to teach you and make you think that the only way you can hear the voice of God is, is if you do steps one, two, three. You hear the voice in your rest. Love on him. Spend time with him. Focus on him. Let him have your heart. And I understand we all have needs and I understand we all have prayer requests. I understand we all need God to move in certain areas of our lives. But hear me, brothers and sisters. But there's nothing like when you just come into his presence. And you allow him to consume you with his love. Everything flows from love because he is. That is the nature of who he is. So as he speaks to your heart, he revives your soul. As he speaks to your heart, he revives your heart. As he speaks to your heart, you'll feel the peace of the Lord come nigh unto thee. And it's not because you're striving. It's not because you're trying. It's because you're abiding in the one in whom you love. It's a love union, y'all. See, God is not our boss where we got to prove to him. He don't want for you to prove to him anything. He wants for you to come to him as a son. He wants for you to come to him as a daughter. He just wants your undivided attention. He just wants for you to love him and to make a space and a place for him. Make your house a habitation. You are his habitation, but make, make your home a habitation. Make your cubicle a habitation. Make your car a habitation. Don't wait for going to church to feel the presence. You can feel the presence every single day of your life. From the time that you get up, from the time that you go to sleep, the presence wants to walk with you and do life with you. 
every single day. So a lot of times, God is going to speak to you. He will speak to you in the bathroom. He will speak to you as you're brushing your teeth. He will speak to you as, as your mind is being distracted because you're doing something, as your mind is being shut down, as you're doing something, as your mind is shut down because you're focusing upon driving or, or as your mind is shut down and you're just enjoying a walk, as your mind is shut down and you're just, you're just, you're just resting in his peace, all of a sudden his voice begins to speak. And that's when he's trying to get us to steward when his voice begins to convey and speak to your heart. Be attentive to it. Pause in that moment and ask the Holy Spirit, what is it, Lord, that you would like to say? He's not going to be condemning. It's not going to be a dirty or any type of negative thought. It's going to be pure. Purity. Purity is the voice of his love. And he will come and speak to you to the depth of your heart and soul. See, in a lot of you, God has been speaking to you through your children. A lot of you, God has been speaking to you through your children, but you think it's them. God will use your children to speak to you. God will use their dreams to speak to you. And they don't even realize what they're saying. God will use your husband, God will use your wife, God will use your mom, your brother, your sister, that minister. He and that minister don't know nothing about you, but then all of a sudden comes in, comes around in the atmosphere of where you are in. And all of a sudden just gives you a word that is so precise of what it is that you knew God was speaking to you. That is the confirmation to seal what it is God has spoken and said. See, so the voice of the Lord is going to come in, a, in, in your common duties. Here, watch this. You could be outside fishing and the voice of the Lord speak to you. The voice of the Lord is going to speak to you mo more often outside of, the, outside of church, outside of, outside of, a, of a facility and a building. The Lord is going to speak to you in your common duties and tasks. You may be outside gardening. You may, out, you may be outside just loving nature and out there gardening. And as you're out there gardening, gardening, you're pulling the weeds, you're planting the seeds, you're watering the plants, and you're doing your common task and your duties. And, and while you're out there, he loves to, he loves to work with you. He, lo he loves to talk to you. He loves to speak to you in that moment. So a lot of you have places where the voice of the Lord meets you more so than other more so than um, other places that you do common duties and tasks in and that that place may be your bathroom that place may be the kitchen counter that place may be doing dishes that place may be as you're vacuuming and you're picking up the clothes and and, and you're doing laundry the voice of the Lord will come to you in your most common, normal duties and tasks but we always wipe it off and we don't think it's we don't think it's anything or a big deal because it's not happening in a church or it's not coming from a minister or a pastor or an evangelist or a prophet we just shrug it off oh yeah 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 you know no that's not no no what the lord is trying to do he's trying to bring you in to take you deeper so that it can speak to you even more. He wants to bring you in close. If I were standing a hundred of, if I were standing a hundred feet away from you, if I were to whisper, could you hear me? 
But if my mouth and if I were hugging or leaning into somebody and if I whispered, could they hear me then? That's the closeness of the Lord, of how near and dear he so desires. Watch this. He's there. The problem is not the Lord being present. The problem is our perspective, not understanding that he is. And a lot of Christians will say, well, you know what? I'm going to go and fast more because I need a word from God. When Christians say I'm going to fast because I need a word, they don't understand who he is. You can't fast to get. You've already got what he wants to speak and convey and say to you. You now just have to trust and rest in and allow in a moment in time for him to unveil to you what is already present. See, Christians, a lot of times want to get religious. And then they go and they fast and they strive and they contend and they try to pull down the heavens. And now they're more frustrated because God didn't say a word. You want to know why? It's because God doesn't move in your striving. God doesn't move. God, God doesn't need you to fast for him to speak. If God needed you to fast in order for his hand to move upon your life, why would he even give you the Holy Ghost? This is why the church doesn't understand what they have. Every time we think that we have to do something to earn from God, you don't understand sonship. See, and this is why we must understand who we are as sons and daughters of God. See, sons and daughters are not out here trying to prove to their daddy trying to force their daddy, trying to force their father to speak to them or to get something from him that he wants to reveal and, and give unto you and speak to you. He just wants for you to simply just come and sit with him. Just be with him, love on him and trust and rely and know that he's going to work it out for your good. Watch this. People don't even... See, when people read Romans 8, all things work together for the good of those who love God. So if I love God and God is my father, why do I need to fast to earn a word from him who loves me? It makes no kind of sense, y'all. We are missing in the American church what sonship truly means. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. The Lord just wants for you to love him. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And the second is like unto the other. Love your neighbor as yourself. And when you come praying, if you have aught with a brother, aught with a sister, forgive them and let it go. You can't afford to hold on to for, uh, unforgiveness. You can't afford that. Maybe this is a word for somebody. Maybe sometimes, a lot of times your prayers may be hindered because you're not forgiving that person. You're not letting it go. You need to let it go. You need to let it go and you need to let them go. Because it's robbing you of God's blessing and of God's promise and of God's voice coming to you 
to help you up and out of that situation. And the Lord has just been waiting. Oh man, ah, reke, ba, ba. The Lord has been waiting on you so that that way the pressure can come off of you of what it is he wants to bring to you, but you won't let go. Hear me, brothers and sisters. We as brothers and sisters and as sons and daughters of God, we can't afford to hold on to unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is poison. Unforgiveness is a blessing blocker. Unforgiveness hinders the flow. Don't let unforgiveness be in your heart, y'all. And let the voice of the Lord entrust and believe that what he's doing for you. I understand those situations occurred. I get it. I understand. But don't let that rob you from what it is God wants to do in your life. Because God is doing something in your midst. So the voice of the Lord is going to come to you sometimes through your children. The voice of the Lord is sometimes going to come to you even sometimes through a song. The voice of the Lord is going to sometimes come to you even, even through a sermon. The voice of the Lord is going to come to you even while you're just mopping the floor, washing the dishes, cooking, at the, at the sink doing dishes, vacuuming out your car. Tending to your garden, outside for a beautiful walk, walking on the beach, swimming in the pool, and sometimes in those just common, simple, unaware moments, the voice of the Lord will come to you. See, the Lord is not religious. He's not just always wanting to speak to you in a service through a minister. He is a loving father that wants to walk with you in the midst of your garden, being the delight that you need to bring in the life and the nourishment of your tree that is rooted in him. He is the vine and we are the branches. Stay connected and close. Give your heart gaze and your attention and your adoration to our Lord. You don't have to do to get. Just rest and trust him of what he's doing in your life. And let his voice come in the most common, in the most simplest way. As you're going about your normal duties and tasks. In the name of Jesus. Let his love and his word saturate your being let the lord marinate you with his presence <laughs> let the lord the delightfulness of his love consume your heart that it may burn for him stop being so consumed in everything outside of him that brings unto your life nothing nothing there's nothing that can sustain like Jesus. There's nothing that can satisfy like Jesus. There's nothing that can fulfill like Jesus. There's nothing that can take his place. He is the gardener tending to your garden, trying to make it right so that you stop striving and trying to earn what it is he already gave. Everything is in the garden and he's tending to it. He's plucking out the weeds. Let him just walk with him. Talk with him. Spend time with him. Let him love you. Let his voice love you and revive you and bring you to life. See, the power of words is critical and vital. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth, out of the mouth of God. Let his voice speak to your heart today. Let him revive you today. Let him minister to you today. Let him encapsulate 
everything within you that will become secure in him. That protects you of everything outside of him trying to get your attention. Amen. Amen. Does anybody have any questions? I'll, I'll, I'll definitely answer any questions. But the voice of the Lord will come in the simplicity of your common duty and task. Don't ever think that you can fast your way to hear God. I need a fast for more power. No, you don't know who you are yet. See, this is why God is raising up myself and many others upon the land so that that way you can walk in the freedom of the Lord in the simplicity of the gospel to walk in the fruitfulness of the Lord so that you can live a life enjoying the moment that we have on this earth to be used for his glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. His voice. Amen. Amen, Caroline. Carolina. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Katrina. God bless you, Sandra. Amen. Amen, Misty. God bless you. God bless you, Sean. Always remember, y'all. Remember. God bless you, Danielle. Just get close. Understand he's there. Right now. Right now. Holy Spirit. Touch. He's there. Quiet the thoughts. Quiet all other voices. And just be still and know that he is God. But he's not only our God, he is a father that loves you. He's a father that loves his children. He wants to speak to you and me. He wants to minister to our hearts and our souls. He wants to destroy the yoke and lift the burden of what it is that has come upon us. That is, that is trying to distract us from his voice. That is trying to distract us from the call. That is trying to distract us from anything trying to get our attention that is not of him. Amen. So stay focused upon his voice. And I promise you, he speaks to you more at the kitchen sink than you know. He speaks to you when you're doing your makeup and you're combing your hair. You got the feather, you got the feather look going on like Jane Fonda, old school 80s. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, in the simple, in the simplest things, in the most common duties and tasks, his voice will speak. But it's our job, and it's our it's our job and responsibility to catch these moments and to understand the Lord is speaking. He will catch you off guard, but he won't, but he's trying to bring us into fellowship with him to steward the moments when he speaks. See, we as believers and sons and daughters of God in Christ Jesus, our Christianity is the ability to steward God moments, to steward and walk out and to, and to take heed to moments when all of a sudden his presence shows up. His voice begins to speak. Because there's, there's something that he wants to do. And that's right. Amen. Yeah, and, and like when I mean stewarding, see, because watch this, everything belongs to the Lord. You do understand that everything belongs to the Lord and we have to give it back. Watch this. Everything belongs to the Lord. Watch this. Christians don't like this. 
Nothing belongs to you. Your children don't belong to you. That husband don't belong to you. That wife don't belong to you, though it does. But God has allowed you to steward what belongs to him, which is why how we treat things and what we do with what we have reflects how we see God. Everything that the Lord gives, everything that we have belongs to the Lord. Even the breath that we breathe, the voice that we have, the health that we have belongs to the Lord. We steward it as sons and daughters of, of God on this earth in our gratefulness and in our thankfulness because it all goes back to him. It belongs to the Lord. That's why I always tell people, <coughs> when, I, when I always tell people, if you're praying for that person as if they belong to you, stop praying like that. Pray for that person because they belong to God. If you're praying and believing God for a prodigal, remember, they are his before they are yours. So if you care about it, if you care about him, he cares about him way more than you ever will. So you pray. Pray understanding this, that nothing is yours. Nada. Nothing. Which is why it matters how we treat and what we do with what we have. More so than we think. Everything belongs to the Lord. Everything. Everything. We are stewards. As sons. As daughters on this earth. Of all of what he gives. Nothing belongs to us. Nothing. It all belongs to him. But we need to live with that perspective. See, if we lived understanding and knowing, even treating people right. If you watch this, if if you understood truly that that man, your husband belongs to God. There would be a fear in your heart as to how you treat him. If you understood that that woman, that daughter belongs to God before she belonged to you, you would treat her right and love her right with the fear of the Lord, knowing she belongs to the Lord. Even the things that God has blessed us with. How we steward our how we steward our time, how we steward raising our children. We're not we're not raising our children just because we are mama and daddy. No, we are raising our children because they belong to the Lord. Why do you think dedication? See, when we dedicate a baby, we dedicate a young one, we're dedicating back to the Lord. They belong to him. You belong to him. You don't even own you. You don't even belong to you. You belong to the Lord. That's why when Christians say, yeah, brother, but we got free will, but we want, but we can do what we want to do. Keep on talking like the devil. See, the devil thought he had free will too. And guess where that got him? See, the demons will try to talk you into thinking, thinking your life is your own too. And guess that guess where it gets people. Free will outside of his will is simply disobedience. 
even Jesus, the Son of God, who came in flesh. Fulfilled the will of the Father all the way through. But for whatever reason in America, we think that we have free will because we understand not the kingdom. Because we have grown up in a democracy mindset and we think that we can just do what we want to do. Not so. <clears throat> but we're not to be robots, brother. I'm not saying anything about robots. I'm talking about your confession of faith or what it is you say you belong to. <laughs> oh, it gets deep, y'all. It gets deep. See, Christians think they still belong to themselves. No, you don't. And until Christians understand this reality, then they'll continue thinking and believing that devils are possessing them because they know not who they are. Because once they understand that they are the property bought by the blood of Christ, consumed by the fire of his spirit, if there's nothing in Jesus, there could be nothing in you. You live in a totally different reality, saints of God. You have to understand even though your true nature is spirit, you live outside of the realm that the demons can't even get to. Ah, Christians don't understand what it is I'm even talking about sometimes when I talk like this and they get mad because they want us, they want to lock hold to their sacred cows. Because they want to believe in what the devil does more so than what truth has said. It is the most warped, craziest thing I, I can ever possibly imagine. And sometimes that I even ponder and I wonder upon even ministers that say they're called of the Lord, yet have a twisted mindset that cannot be confirmed and, solid, and solidified by truth. And they're keeping Christians and people in bondage. They're, they got Christians on the run, running from the devil, in works, always focus upon, make sure you don't open that door. And I get it. I'm not saying people should be doing, like I said, once you understand you're not your own and you belong to Christ and you're the property of Jesus, you're not going to be doing things and out there messing with the devil and out there monkeying around with, with any type of witchcraft nonsense no when you belong to christ and his spirit comes to live on the inside of you he will begin to transform you from the inside out and you begin to be you begin to become transformed into the image and likeness of him of what it is he's called you to see he's trying to bring us into a union that is so tight and close Where he can use your life for his glory. Whew. Jesus, we worship you. I love you, Lord. There's no one like you. How I worship you. Ah. <laughs> Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Move upon the hearts of your people today, Lord. Show them the way, which is you. Revive them, strengthen them, heal them. And take them by the hand, Lord, and show them even deeper realms of your glory. Of your presence in their midst. Of your hand of miracles walking alongside, following them everywhere they go. Breathe upon your people by your spirit, by your love, by your peace. Ah, thank you, Jesus, for your presence in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ha.
Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. He loves you, saints of God. He loves you. He's for you. And he is working together all things for your good. But you got to rest. Not stress. Rest. Not stress. Stress will rob from you. Stress will delay you. Stress, yeah, brother, but you don't understand. No, 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 no. Calm the voice, the voices trying to override his voice. Be still and know that he is God. Don't let, don't let what is happening to you get in you and become you and try to lead you up and out of his rest. His voice is in the rest of the Lord. Your rest is your power stance. The joy of the Lord, <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is your strength. It don't say, it doesn't say fight the fight. The devil's is your strength. It says the joy of the Lord is your strength. How do we get the joy, brother? In his presence is the fullness thereof. And where is his presence? Ah, his presence is on the inside of you. His presence is right here in the garden is in the ark you don't we don't need to put the presence of god in a box no more because the presence of god is on the inside of you and you don't have to carry it with poles you're walking out the kingdom of god on this earth you are walking out the kingdom on this earth by that temple of where the spirit of god resides he don't need a building. He needs your body. He needs our temple sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and the burning fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus, y'all. I love you all in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know why my screen went dimmed out, but I love you all in the name of Jesus. Have a beautiful and an amazing day. His voice wants to speak to you. And he is speaking to you. Just stop thinking and stop thinking that his voice is going to come to you in a church service. God is not wanting just to speak to you in a church service. He wants to walk with you on the daily. Give us this day our daily bread. No, no, no. But I want to go. I want to go to the church building. That's where God speaks to me. And he does. But stop expecting him outside of your most common duties and tasks and then you get wore out and then now you're trying to stretch and reach for and make happen what it is he's been trying to make happen in your common duties and tasks come on somebody he wants to do in your life and speak to you as you're washing dishes he wants to speak to you as you're mopping the floor he wants to speak to you as you're mowing the lawn he wants to speak to you as you're, as you're walking in the park, as you're fishing, as you're working, and you're behind that computer screen, and the voice of the Lord and his presence just comes upon you, and tears begin to flow. Oh, I don't want no one to see me cry, brother. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. I don't want no one to see me cry. I don't want no one to see. They're going to think something. No, no, no. Let the love of Christ... I don't care who's around. If the love of God invades, I'm going to embrace it. See, that's what I'm talking about. Don't be ashamed of his presence when he shows up. Don't try to hide the presence. You don't have to hide the presence. And besides, when a moment and a kiss from heaven comes nigh unto you, receive it with all that you have within you. Because, it's, because here's the thing. You've been waiting for it. You've been waiting for it. You've been waiting for this moment. You've been waiting for his presence. 
See, because when his presence shows up and his presence lingers upon you, all that stress is going to go. Any tormenting devil is going to leave. All anxiety is going to flee. All depression is going to go. When his presence shows up, things begin to happen. Hallelujah. I love you all. Have a beautiful and an amazing day. Thank you all so much for joining today. Feel free to share and like this video. And thank you for joining in today. Don't stress, just rest. Don't stress, just rest. I'm not saying be lazy. I said rest. Rest in what, brother? Rest in knowing that he's already done it and he's doing it for you. There's nothing you can do and or force anyway in the timing of the Lord, but just rest in what it is he's finished and doing and let the timing of the Lord play out in your midst. Amen. I love you all in Jesus name. Have a beautiful and an amazing day. Watch and see the next time you're washing dishes, the next time you're combing your hair, the next time you're putting on makeup, the next time you're getting dressed, the next time you're bathing, the next time you're mowing the lawn, the next time you're out taking a walk in the park, the next time you're on the golf course, or the next time you're behind that computer screen, or the next time you're driving your car, or the next time you're even talking to a friend, or the next time your your, your little babies come walking by you, or, or your sons and your daughters come walking by you, and all of a sudden something out of their mouth comes from the Lord to speak to your heart of what it is you've been praying to God for. Don't minimize how God can and or will speak. See, we miss moments thinking that we got to strive our way. You don't have to strive your way to the Father. The Lord don't need you to fast for him to speak. That is religion. That is carnality. There's nothing you can do in the flesh that can move the hand of God that, can, that only moves by faith. Without faith, it's impossible. Hear me. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It don't say anything in there. That you got to fast to get God to move. That you got to spin around seven times to get God to move. That you got to that you got to strive and pray longer to get God to move. Love on him. Trust him. Have faith in him. And rest in the finished work of everything that he's already done for you already. Because God is on the move in your life. In his presence, by the spirit, on the inside of you, is here, right now, in your midst. He's here, right now, with you, right there. His presence is upon you, removing that stress. It's okay to let it out. Get it off your shoulders, get it off your chest. You don't got to carry that no more, sister. You don't got to carry that no more, brother. Get it off. The only thing you need to be carrying is your cross. Or what it is the Lord said for you to hold on to. And to follow him. Do what it is he says to do. Be obedient to his voice. Remember, rhema, the rhema will be confirmed by the Logos. The Rhema will be confirmed by the Logos. Remember that. So let the Spirit of the Lord speak and watch and see the hand of God move. Rest, don't stress, because stress will block. Stress will hinder. 
Stress will delay what God is trying to say. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Have a beautiful and an amazing one. I love you all. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What is going on my screen here? Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm not sure what happened there, but praise ye the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I love you all in the name of Jesus. Have a beautiful and an amazing day. May God bless you. May he establish you and keep you forever. Keep you forever in the shalom of the Lord. The shalom of the Lord. The peace of our God in every aspect and area of your life. And may the Lord do for you even things that you not even thought about, that his goodness will shine upon you and bring unto you peace. The Lord is always about peace, y'all. Remember that. Remember that. He don't want you stressing. He don't want you worrying. He don't want you anxious. He wants you in rest, not stress. <laughs> Love you all. Have a beautiful and an amazing day in Jesus name. God bless you.